Good morning to you. Mark Settle, Hurricane Track here, Monday now, the 28th of April, 2025. I'm over in Kansas City, Missouri, on the west side, out here in the plains for some severe weather coverage these next few days. I'll talk about that at the end of today's update. But first, drought in Florida getting to be a real big problem. I want to address that and how that is related to the upcoming hurricane season. Now just a little bit over a month away, hard to believe. Folks in Florida, while nobody will be wishing for a hurricane, certainly, the tropical moisture could definitely be useful because it has been really dry and some uh, fires have been popping up. So we're going to talk about that, of course, the severe weather aspect, our coverage of such over the next few days, and then a few things related to the upcoming hurricane season in between. Great to have you joining in. Let's get started. First, in the sunshine state, a little bit too much sunshine. Now, luckily, no D4 areas are showing up just yet, but the extreme drought, starting to see that more and more, and just overall a very dry pattern here since last hurricane season when Milton came through. Really, after that, things just seem to have cut off. Most of the state now, in some form uh, or evolutionary process, if you will, of drought conditions, and it doesn't really look like that's going to change much anytime soon. We're waiting for the onset of the rainy season. That really hasn't started. We're going to have to rely on some tropical waves to come in here from the east at some point. Maybe get the uh, mid-inland uh, areas of Florida to take advantage of sea breeze and convergence. But you could get some lightning. And with it being so dry down there, that could be a problem. But I wanted to point this out because the upcoming hurricane season could help out with maybe a depression or a storm that comes in and out quickly. You know, you got to be careful what you wish for. But it is true, sometimes tropical systems can come and bail you out of drought situations. But there's that balance. Obviously, as humans, there's nothing we can do about it except be prepared and aware. But yes, sometimes that balance, you know, maybe it works out just right. And you can get a weak tropical system to come through without much wind and storm surge issues, dump a few inches of rain, get out of there, and help to relieve some of these drought conditions. Uh, and let me just back this out real quick to show you the overall picture for the United States. Obviously, the southwest U.S. is where we are most concerned. But here in the east, it has, it's not been particularly wet, so uh, we do have some drought problems. Really fascinating stuff, especially as a geographer. I like maps, and this is a great what we call thematic map that tells us a very important message. Okay, so related to the upcoming season, I thought this was a very interesting post from our mutual friend. We all love Ben Knoll. Check out how much cooler the Atlantic is this year compared to last, he said. The MDR, the main development region, about 2 degrees cooler Celsius overall than last year. This will be important. Possibly a limiting factor. I added the possibly part because we don't know for sure. Uh, for the hurricane season, which is just weeks away. So there's last year, there's this year. Last year, this year, quite a remarkable difference. That's great to see. But I want to remind you, as we look at last year's historic record here, um, the ones that really impacted the U.S. did not originate uh, from the main development region except Barrel. Everything else, so Helene and Milton, those came from much closer to home. We did not have, despite the very, very warm water out here that Ben is talking about, we didn't have much activity come out of that area, which was surprising. So, yes, it is a little bit of good news. If you can sort of shut things down out here, that prevents those long track hurricanes, possibly. But, and I've said this so many times over the course of my career. I just want to make sure everybody understands how it works. What doesn't develop in the main development region can develop maybe later on. The webcam's being wonky. Sorry about that. Um, so, yes, it is good news, but it doesn't necessarily mean we are completely off the hook. We just want people to be aware and stay on top of things, looking at facts and figures, and the facts don't lie. If it doesn't develop out this way, a tropical wave can continue on, and then it can blossom much closer to land masses, including our friends in the Caribbean. All right? So speaking of all of that, how are things looking? This is the latest anomalies map. 
And yes, it has cooled significantly out in the main development region since last year, but we're not looking at widespread cold anomalies out here, that's for sure, and no El Nino through here. So again, as I've said many times over the last few weeks, no reason to believe that this season will be inactive. So prepare for a busy season with lots to track and possible impacts. We will cover all of that, of course, as we keep going forward. All right, so that's the wide shot. Here's a closer up look. Tell you what, boy, the Gulf of Mexico is still running so warm relative to average, and that's where it matters. These places closer to home, the Caribbean over here, all of these water temperatures warmer than average. A little bit of a cooler area here in the southwest Atlantic, but any homegrown systems or any tropical waves that come through and don't develop out this way, they could blossom over here, and again, they are much closer to where most of us live. So we have to just keep all that in mind, balancing everything out. The good news with the facts, all right? Water temperatures, let me switch this over a little bit. There we go. Actual temperatures, so these are anomalies. These are your departures from the average, all right? These are your actual temperatures, and the Gulf is certainly warming up. 26 degrees Celsius line uh, right about here. Sorry, it's 25. But it's getting there. You know, we're getting into May, and it'll start to rapidly warm. Uh, the shallower areas of the northern Gulf will warm quickly. The deeper water of the open Gulf takes a little bit longer. But the Gulf is always warm enough for intense hurricanes. Never, ever forget that. By the time you get to August, it is definitely going to be warm enough. And you got that loop current in there. We just got to be ready. You know, we got to really have this state of saying, I am going to do what I can to be ready whatever that means for you, all right? The Atlantic, it takes a little bit longer. I was looking at the areas off where I live, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, Wrightsville Beach. Water temps over here are still very low 70s, but out in the Gulf Stream, 25, 26 Celsius out here is upper 70s to about 80. That's not bad. Take that, right? I don't have a boat, though, so I can't go out in the Gulf Stream, but we'll wait maybe a little bit after Memorial Day. Beach water temperatures will be warm enough for Mr. Mark here. I like it when it's about 80 degrees. So real quick, just a little preview of what I do in the hurricane season. I like to look at the 850 millibar vorticity. That's down almost a mile above the Earth's surface. And what we are looking for are areas, let's use this purple color, where the energy kind of bundles like that. Uh, when you get bundled, vorticity especially very round looking in these models on the Earth's surface, the more round a storm is, usually the more intense it is, that conservation of angular momentum. And we don't see any of that down in the tropics over the next two weeks. I'm just going to scan right on through all mid-latitude storm systems, these large upper cold areas of low pressure. It looks like a face, doesn't it? Almost like a little dog nose or something. If you look at it long enough, you see strange things. Uh, but anyway, no signs of any shenanigans down in the tropics just yet. We will be watching the Western Caribbean and vicinity Eastern Pacific as we get into May for the infamous Central American gyre, but no signs of that just yet. So there's some good news for you. All right, severe weather. It is severe weather season, and to that end, today we got the moderate risk up here in parts of Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin and then the trailing cold front, the dry line, and whatnot. All kinds of modes possible from wind gusts uh, over 70 miles per hour, very large hail, maybe baseballs in some spots. Come on, webcam, cut it out. And uh, yes, the threat of tornadoes. It is upon you, if you live here, to read this yourself. I'm just making you aware of it. Now look, I'm out here. I know I got the Hurricane Track shirt on there, and this is the Hurricane Track channel, but... I'm fascinated by all kinds of impactful weather. And in the last year or so, I decided, hey, let's start studying hail more. So I've got a keen interest in hail. It causes billions of dollars of damage a year. It's not as studied and photographed and documented and sort of oogled over as uh, uh, tornadoes are. And I understand that. But it is definitely a big economic problem. Tornadoes can be very deadly. Hail can be very costly. Sometimes the tornadoes are too, but you're not going to have a $10 billion tornado season, at least we better not. So that's why I am out here. 
My target area today with my partner CJ, we were right over here roughly. We're going to make our way down here. This is just too far, and there's going to be too many other chasers up there. And we're going to be looking for hail and tornadoes through here. So we will be streaming that live in a few hours, so be sure to tune in on our YouTube channel. All right, tomorrow all of the uh, stuff changes, of course. No, we are not flying over to Watertown, New York, and vicinity. <laughs> but, hey, this could be interesting for folks that live up in this region. CJ and I will be down in this area where we will be looking for, you guessed it, very large hydrometeorites, as we call them. I like to say that I study the economic impacts of the kinetic energy of hydrometeorites. Oh, yeah, you study hail? Yes, I do. And tomorrow looks like a significant hail day. And even a tornado threat, 2% is not zero. I mean, you saw that beast in Nebraska last night. I think they were at 5%. But anyway, that's what we're doing out here. And, uh, you know, it's just part of the overall uh, interest of me. I don't know why that's not popping up. Interest of mine to cover all kinds of impactful weather. And it all leads back to our preparedness as a team here for hurricane season coverage, testing equipment, all kinds of things that go into this. And so we have a useful uh, purpose out here in Tornado Alley uh, with studying hail specifically. All right, so again, we will be on live on the YouTube channel there. So if you haven't subscribed, go over to youtube.com slash hurricane track. You're probably watching it there, right? Just hit that subscribe button. Look, it's more for you than it is for me. I want you to be able to enjoy and benefit from the info that we're putting out and any live streams that we do make sure you get that notification button uh, pushed pressed smashed whatever they say and you can stay up to date with what we're doing all right that is about it let me get back over to the title card so i can exit hopefully nice and gracefully so look i will uh presumably have another update later in the week we will be live any day that i have time in the morning to put something together we don't have a lot of driving I will keep you updated with a video like this. But also follow me over on the old Twitter there. And I'm going to try to be posting some stuff on TikTok, God help me, and Instagram as well. Working on all of that, ramping those different social media arms up more and more, getting into hurricane season. So this is good practice for all of that. Everybody be safe out there, right? Have a good rest of your Monday. Thanks for giving me a little bit of a part of your day. I appreciate your time and attention. For myself, for CJ, who's helping me, and all of us at Hurricane Track, thank you for watching. We'll see you again live in just a few hours.